previously on Vin the Kitchen. Mama no! Let's play some word association. What comes to mind when you hear the word sushi? Um, raw fish, difficult. What about the word bake? Uh, heated, cooked in an oven, not sushi. How about sushi bake? Um, I'd say a deconstructed sushi roll that's easy to make and share with a variety of ingredients, highly customizable to one's palate, budget, and desires. Uh, sure. So we're making sushi bake. If you never had it or seen it, it's, it's basically a giant sushi casserole. Get it? Casserole? Sushi roll? I'm way funnier in my head. Basically, you get a bed of sushi rice, topped with, honestly, whatever you want. Crab, salmon, tuna, whatever. The world's your oyster. You want oyster? Sure. That's the beauty of it. Anything works. You could use expensive fish, some fake crab, or some canned tuna. Mix that with some flavorings, some cream cheese, some mayo, top it with some sauces, bake it, and then serve it with some seaweed sheets. Honestly, one of the easiest and most accessible ways of having sushi in your own kitchen. So to start, we're gonna need to make some sushi rice, which starts from steamed white rice. If you wanna learn how to make steamed white rice, I know a guy, click here. Now sushi rice is often made with short grain rice. I'm using long grain because that's what I got. It doesn't make too much of a big difference. If you wanna get short grain, you go right ahead. It's all good, it's only rice. But next we need our seasoned rice vinegar, which mixes with our rice, and that's all it takes to make sushi rice. So if you're using a nine by 13 pan, what are these called? Casserole dish? I don't know. You're gonna want at least three to four cups of cooked rice. Generally speaking, one cup of uncooked rice will make about three cups of rice. So that's kind of a good guideline to use. So for our rice vinegar, we're gonna need about two and a half teaspoons of rice vinegar to which we'll add in about half a tablespoon of sugar and then half a teaspoon of salt. So next we're gonna heat this up. You can either do this on a stove top or just use your microwave just so that the salt and the sugar can mix in with the vinegar. So once we got our rice vinegar, sugar and salt all mixed up, we're gonna spread out our rice on a flat surface, allowing it to cool. We're gonna mix our vinegar together. I don't own a hangiri, is that how you pronounce it? because as extra as I am, I'm not that extra. Any flat surface we'll do using this will give us a good guideline of how much rice we're gonna be using. So we want about around three cups of cooked rice. This vinegar is enough for about that much. This is a very forgiving thing to make. So use as much or as little rice as you'd like. That looks to be enough for me. Basically we could use our rice scooper. Kind of helps us spread out our seasoned rice vinegar all over our rice to which we'll cut and mix. Kind of a 10 degree cutting motion and moving it around. By doing it this way, we don't mash up our rice and have mashed rice. We want our rice grains to stay as a rice grain. Don't want them to break. This kind of helps facilitate that. Is this the proper way of making sushi rice? Probably not, but don't let that stop you. You can taste some of the rice. See if it's enough seasoning for your liking. If not, add a little bit more. I like to make a big batch so I could have this ready at all times. I'm gonna add a little bit more because I like my rice seasoned knee. Give this another taste test. That's perfect for me. Once this gets cooled down, you can just cover this up with a damp towel to keep it moist. And if you're not gonna make it right away, you could also put this back into a rice cooker on keep warm to keep it moist, kind of backwards, but that's how you keep your sushi rice moist after it cools down. Next, we're gonna make some of our sauces. First, a nunagi sauce. I'm gonna use a quarter cup of mirin, quarter cup of soy sauce, two and a half tablespoons of sugar, and then one and a half tablespoons of rice wine. Stir that up, and we're gonna bring this to a boil. Once it starts to boil, we can bring this down to a simmer and let this simmer for about five to eight minutes. Simmer down now. It's been about 10 minutes now. It really depends on your temperature, how much you got, how big your pan is. But the idea is that once your sauce starts to bubble over and cover the top like this, your sauce is good, ready. So we'll off our heat, take it off the heat, 
let this cool down and when it cools down it will get to a nice thick consistency so once this cools down we can put in a nice squeeze water to help manipulate our sauce but now we got this rich sweet umami packed sauce that honestly goes well with anything next Japanese mayo. Of course you could just use regular mayo, but you'll be missing out on that tang and that sweetness of the Japanese mayo. It's thicker, it's creamier, and it works way better for this. So for our mayo, one egg yolk. Oh no. Yeah, that works, sure. Half a lemon juice, one teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, quarter teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of Hondashi, one tablespoon of rice vinegar, and lastly, about three quarter cup of canola, or vegetable, any neutral flavor oil. Pour that in. And of course, blend that with an immersion blender. Give it a little taste test. That's good mayo. Now, if you don't want to make your own Japanese mayo, I really don't see why not. You're missing out. But to Japify American mayo, can I say that? Japify? For one cup of regular mayo, add two tablespoons of rice vinegar, one tablespoon of sugar, and one teaspoon of mustard powder, or mustard. And that should get you sort of there. But if not, just, just make this, this. Anyways, next, we're gonna preheat our oven to 350 degrees while we prep our fish toppings. So for our toppings, I wanna do a cream cheese, mayonnaise mixture with one side imitation crab, because I'm not a baller, and spicy salmon on the other side for a little variety. So for our base, in a mixing bowl, about 120 grams of room temp cream cheese, then half a cup, about half a cup of our mayo. Then about a teaspoon of sugar, eighth of a teaspoon of ground black pepper, to which we're gonna mix together. So next, we're gonna split this into two bowls, get half of this into another bowl of some sort, to which we're gonna add about 200 grams or so of salmon, which I'm gonna de-skin. And then gonna chop these into small cubes. You can get them as thin or as chunky as you like. That's pretty good for me. So we're gonna get that into one of our bowls. Next, we'll chop a green onion. We'll put that in our, with our salmon. Which we'll add about a tablespoon or so of sriracha. Next for our crab, or uh, imitation crab. We're gonna be using about the same amount, so about 200, 220 grams or so. To which, it's gonna chop these the same way as well. Okay, which we'll put in with our other bowl of cream cheese mayo mixture. To which I'll add about a tablespoon of tobiko. Might as well just get rid of all of it. Then it's as simple as mixing this up in the aforementioned sauce. You could really use any combination you'd like, especially with this cream cheese and mayo mixture. Literally anything works. Here we got our spicy salmon mix. All right, to set this up, got our rice leveled, pushed down, and flattened in our casserole dish. To bring this to the next level, you're gonna want some of this furry kake. It's basically this Japanese seasoning. Uh, you can make it yourself, but this stuff just tastes really good. So, on top of our rice, I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of this on top. Next for our fishies. Of course, just wanna spread this over evenly. Bring it to about the halfway mark so it looks pretty. Sushi's supposed to look pretty and taste pretty. And we got our crab mixture on this side. We're gonna put this in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes till this browns 
Our salmon only needs to reach about 120 Fahrenheit until it's cooked. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. Our fish is ready. Our crab is ready. But I'm gonna put this in the broiler for a couple of minutes just to get this to brown a little bit. Then we'll finish this off. Oh, but this is a cooking show, so you gotta do extra. This is hot, this is hot. I need a coaster. So, if you got a torch, shout out to David and Kathy. You could torch the top like gourmet sushi. Give it a nice little char here. Brings out some extra flavor. Ooh, hear that sizzle. Hear that crackle. Let's add a little bit more of our furikake. Furi, furikake. Sorry, let's get that all over. Next, add some sesame seeds. Then a drizzle of some more of that. Ooh, yeah. Thick mayo. Ooh, she's thick. And then a healthy amount of our unagi sauce. And that's it for sushi bake. How do you eat this? Well, what you do is take a sheet of nori, cut out yourself a little square. Ooh, it's hot. Kind of want that to cool down. Basically, you got yourself a little sushi roll in the palm of your hands. That. That slaps, if you didn't know what that was. This has all the flavors you want in a sushi roll and you could make it whatever way you want. You could try different ingredients, try different sauces, try different bases. You don't even need the cream cheese or the mayo. You just do just mayo, you do just cream cheese. It's easy to make. You can go as simple or as crazy as you like. This is a really good thing to bring around and share with your friends. Speaking of sharing with your friends, why don't you go ahead and share this video? Was that a smooth and shameless plug? Not anymore. So while you're here, why don't you just click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. So when I do post a new video, I'll be able to come over and let you know personally. See you then.